Hey guys, today I'm on Ken's Man's Corner. The topic will be Ken's skin. If you've watched the previous vlogs, you've probably noticed my skin looks a little different than normal. Well, that's because I was born with a genetic skin disorder called Erythriocodermia variabilis. Yes, a mouthful. Well, basically, it's not a harmful skin disorder. It is a beneficial skin disorder. Um, how you can tell, you know, what it is. See this right here? Basically, red plaques grow on my skin, which is like, how I said, it? it grows into armor. Basically, with erythroidermia variabilis, what, what st makes it stand out is one inch thick uh, plaques or plates can grow on top of the skin and then they can disappear as well so basically it is like armor and it'll start on my arm like this and go all the way like this until it stops right here you see how it stops right there and then it will go down like this and connect like this and come up like a collar on my neck won't get on my face or my head or anything. Just on my arms, my chest, my back, my sides, and my legs, and my feet. But yes, um, it's really rare. Uh, back when I was diagnosed, it took 113 dermatologists to figure out what I had. At first, they thought I had lupus because when I was born, there was a butterfly on my stomach. But it was not lupus. I did not show any other signs of lupus. And so they started doing testing on me. Testing basically consists of doing a bunch of skin grafts. I think I had about maybe 20 skin grafts done to me within a uh, four month period. Yes. And different kind of testings. That's why when you hear me say, oh, aliens. It kind of felt like that. I was getting tested on by aliens because some skin grafts hurt really bad. And the thing is, my skin heals a little bit more faster than normal. So I heal really fast. So any kind of cuts or anything heals it fast. Because what happens is, is my body creates what makes it so unique as well, it forms the plaques in the plates, is my body creates a huge amount of dead layers of skin but on the opposite end of that it creates a lot of a huge amount of new layers of skin stuff too so basically if I get cut that skin that's being produced really fast heals that cut way faster than normal and the dead skin creates it builds up and builds up and builds up and creates plaques now uh, when the time I was diagnosed there's two people in the U.S. that had it, four people in the world. There's different variants of erythroidermia variabilis, but the rarest is what I have. And four people in the world who had it, has it. Now, you know, more information is out. I think two, and all together, 200 families in the world as erythroepidermia variabilis. It's passed on every five to six, it shows every five to six generations in a family. Um, but my diagnosed in my, you know, in Winston Salem at uh, Wake University, I believe, a hospital, Wake Hospital, or something like that. Um, I think the 113th doctor was the director of the department, the director of the hospital, or something like that. Or an association, and he came from England, and he diagnosed me. But uh, it's, a, it's a beneficial disorder. Um, I, other than my healing rates uh, faster, I um, the only thing that doesn't, the only thing that affects me, I don't itch or don't burn, you know, my skin don't, isn't, doesn't get irritated, 
like you know burning wise or itching wise but I am a little more acceptable to heat so if it feels like it's, if it's 90 degrees in a room to you it's 98 to me I'm a little more I'm weak to heat than normal uh, cold I can uh, take the cold pretty good because the dead skin acts as an insulator too. It keeps you know it keeps my heat in and all stuff. Um, my battery's about to die. Oh no! I take care of it. I whip the lotion on it. Lotion and uh, coconut oil. That's what Moki does. To, you know, whips it on there. Um, what else? Basically, growing up, you know, it, it was always there. I never mind. I never minded it. Now the only thing I, you know, other than that was you know people made fun of me in school. You know, they call me skin, you know, they call me uh, snake skin, you know, my, I mean, I don't take care of it, and it'll start flaking, like sunburn, like that kind of, you know, skin, or stress, different things cause it to flare up, so if I get stressed out, or I get hurt, or whatever, if I'm in danger, I'm worried, my skin will start producing, you know, new layers of skin way faster than my normal amount that I produce. So amp up. And also the dead skin layers will amp up too. Thus some plates will form really fast. Like protective armor kinda like. But basically, people in school they make fun of me, they call me snake skin, they call me monster and all stuff because, you know, I look different than them. But that's not you know, that's that's the past and that's school, high school and all stuff. But that's the only thing socially wise, that's the only thing you know, it kinda you know was a drawback because people don't know how to accept other people but uh, you know what that's them you know that's also what allowed me to open, have an open mind you know accept everyone because of the stuff I've been through but I use coconut oil and lotion to take care of it and I uh, do like a maple brown sugar rub to get my dead skin off occasionally and I get back into that too um, and yeah, the only, thing, the only way to treat it wise, it's not curable, you know, you can't get rid of it. The only way to treat it would be do a tar bath kind of thing where they take, put you in a tar bath and then they roll you up in a, like a sheet or whatever, like a tar cigarette. It costs like I think $6,000 to do each session. It doesn't cure you, it only lessens the, you know, amount of different skin, you know, the red skin. And there's a pill which, you know, it'll make it go dormant where you won't show any, you know, any of this. But it causes cancer, it causes anomia, it causes liver damage, it, kill, it causes organ failure, occasional nausea, uh, nausea um, dizziness, thoughts of, you know, suicide, and yeah. Don't want to do that. I mean, don't. You know what? I accept myself. I know Moki loves me no matter what. So, yeah, that's my skin. That is that is me. And I just leave letting you guys know what it was because I'm pretty sure I've flashed my chest or my, my skin occasionally, multiple times in our videos. So, yeah, I just wanted to fill you guys in and let you know what it is. And if you want to look it up, uh, I encourage you to. You know, you learned something new if you didn't know, and I'll put I'll write down the name in the video, or write down the name in the description box below to give you an idea of how it's spelled. Because even doctors can't even spell it who didn't you know I have a new doctor they don't know how it's spelled, so I have to you know spell it out for them by looking it up. Because sometimes I, I forget how it's spelled, but yeah. So yep, if you liked this video, please subscribe and comment if you haven't subscribed. And you know, comment. Tell me if you, you know, have someone else who you, know, you think might have it, or if you have a relative, or whatever. Talk about, you know, if you need someone to talk to, here I am. I can help people. You know, I can we can talk, you know talk, discuss, and you know, if someone's having trouble accepting you know their skin, you have this plaque psoriasis or something like that. They almost look identical. Identical. People often confuse what I have with plaque psoriasis, which you know they're not the same, but they do look the same. So. Yeah, if you have no personal learn, you know, if you have it personally, PM, private message me, or if you want to talk in comments, that's fine. I mean, I'm willing to talk and, you know, discuss, and if you need help, let me know. Um, so, yep. So, guys, 
I'm signing off and Kenton, we'll see you in the next video.